Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Knights of the Old Republic. Alrighty, when we left off, we had uh, just gotten back to Tatooine after our diversion back to Dantooine when we discovered we had a stowaway on our ship. And uh, now we are back at Tatooine on the path that we are supposed to be taking. Um, also, I discovered a couple of things didn't save for whatever reason. Uh, a couple of conversations and whatnot that I had didn't actually get saved. So, I had to do all of them again. And now we should be at a point that I can continue <laughs> and not have doubling up things that we've already heard. Don't know why that happened, but uh, I fixed it. There's that. So, uh, let's talk to Bastila here. How can I help? I'd like to know more about you, Bastila. Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. A little, Very yeah. Well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Good. We'll, we can find out why you uh, have so much of a stick up your ass. Uh, tell me how you joined the Jedi. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most mm -hmm. Padawans are. Yeah. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. Tal Ravan. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Why? Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst. But even love can lead to folly. You aren't allowed to love. Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. We have an entire trilogy of movies that try to prove that point, and it kind of works. Uh, you don't sound very convinced on that. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. Who weren't you on good terms with? I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She I pushed see. my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. That kind of sucks. And yeah, she would be kind of a shitty mother if that was the case. But I have a feeling there's a lot more to it than that, and her uh, growing up outside of the whole situation may have made her uh, interpret events to be different. That's usually the case, nine times out of ten in this sort of situation, so maybe that's what happened here? I guess we'll find out. You never tried to get in touch with your father again? The child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better uh -huh. if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Are you saying you... N wait. If a Jedi were to love, surely it wouldn't be all bad. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I guess. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. I see. You'd rather not keep uh, discussing it. Gotcha. How can I help? And no, nope, no more. I can talk then to I you about. And I suggest we move on. All right. I guess we'll move on, and uh, we'll talk to Karth yes, here. What's on your mind? Uh, you don't have yeah. anything other than what's about this place. Okay. Well, let's uh, check in on everyone else before I get out of here. How Jihani. may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Uh, I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Uh, are you doing all right? I, I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. Uh, why? What is wrong? I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. Fair enough. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now, and I can still see it. I still feel it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, perhaps you just need more time. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. Fair enough. Uh... I mean, if I see you begin to slip back, I will intervene. I 
Thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. Good to hear. It, it, it sounded a lot harsher, that line, than was probably intended. Um, but uh, that's another thing as well, um, particularly about that. See, this is why I don't like the strict guidelines a Jedi has. And at the same time, the freewheeling sort of cruel brutality of the Sith doesn't really appeal either. Um, eventually, we will get to a guy that I can talk about and I like. Um, because it introduces a third option. But we're, we aren't there yet. We are not there yet. Uh, we could be there very soon. Presumably. <laughs> but we're not there yet. In a bit of time. In a bit of time, we'll get there. So, uh, we talked to, uh, talked to Jihani. Let's see, does Candor yeah, have anything more want? to say? Uh, no. Your choice. Okay. Uh, mission. Let's talk to her. Let's see if she has anything for me. Hey there. What can I do for you? Uh, I know she doesn't have any more security spikes. Uh, I want to talk to you about your brother. Don't tell me you believe Lena's lies. Griff might be working as a miner on Tatooine, but the rest of her story is Bantha Poodoo. You can't trust someone like her. Y At you... least Griff's free of her clutches. I'd like to go speak to the Circa Corp rep on Tatooine if we have time. Maybe I can arrange to see my brother again. Fair enough. We'll find your brother. I just hope he's not in any kind of trouble when we do. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. All right, let's head out. We'll bring, uh... Oh, you know what? We'll bring Bastila and, uh... Mission actually... Can... I think Juhani should be close to a level up by now. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. I don't know. Welcome to Anchorhead. Hi there. Customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve. After some formalities, of course. Uh -huh. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. What do I get from my 100 credits? The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've huh. paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. Uh-huh. I don't need to pay the fee. You know, I don't think you need to pay the fee. We'll let it go this time. Well, that was easy. Sure wish I had special mind affecting force powers. Yeah, I bet you do. We'll cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration, so we can serve you better when you return. Now, well, that's as good. a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? Uh, it's a bit of both. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need good paying work. What is there to do? It depends on what level of risk you want to take. Okay. You could ask at the Zerka office if any bounties need collecting. That's in the central anchor head. Okay. While you're at the office, bounties. ask for a hunting license so you can sell trophies to Fonda in his lodge, just north of them. I suppose you could also take up swoop, swoop racing. racing. Talk to the hut at the registration office by the track. That's in West Anchorhead. I can't say I know which of these jobs is the most dangerous. I stay away from all of them. <laughs> Fair enough. You like the uh, value of your own uh, skin, I get ya. I get ya. But, I mean, considering I'm not risking my actual skin, I could do all three. Uh, swoop racing I might do off camera strictly because 
I might engage in a lot of safe scumming to do so. <laughs> just, just, you know, to build up the funds and the muns and all that good stuff. Uh, whoa. That's a hell of a line. I'm looking for a very specific things. Who should I ask? That's not much information. Could you tell me more? I kind of can't divulge a lot of info. I could say I'm looking for older things. Antiques. Artifacts, even. You a digger? I've heard of ruins being found now and then, but they've always been stripped that's, of sand people soon after. That's You're a not poorly going phrased. Anywhere with them. Poorly phrased. you could ask around. Poorly phrased line. I doubt you'll learn anything different. You could always ask mm. a Jawa. It's hard to tell mm. what they know. Mmm. Mmm. You could have worded that so much better. That wouldn't immediately have made my brain go, whoa. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. All right. Give me some background on Tatooine. There isn't much to tell. It's a very old planet, well past its prime. Fair enough. Zerka Corporation is the only company with any interest in it. It's not a very pretty world, but there is opportunity here if you know where to look. Fair enough. Uh, what about the operations that Zerka's engaging in here? I can't really get into that. Really? It hasn't been a very smooth operation. I shouldn't get into it. You want to tell me I, more about it. I can tell you more, I guess. It's not a big secret or anything. Just not good for business. Mm -hmm. You see, Zerka Corporation staked their claim to this planet based on some very promising geological surveys. I see. Unfortunately, that information was... Oh! Impressive. Possibly even... You were sold bad stuff. By a rival bad company. info. I see. You were sold bad info, and now you realize you're kind of stuck here until you can find someone to pawn it off onto. Zerka Corporation set up shop on a bad planet. Not totally barren. Uh -huh. After a few good years of mining, and limited operations are still in place. Fair enough. But the ore is flawed. It has peculiar properties. I they had to see. Look at other forms of business. What do you mean when you say it's peculiar? Zerka Corporation has really tried to hide this, but it just seems that Tatooine metal is unfit for effective manufacturing. I, I see. I would imagine that this outpost will eventually be abandoned. Nobody is making any money here. Of course, this rock may have been settled a few times, so look for some other company to get stuck with it. You, you plan on selling it to someone else with exactly the same trick that you fell for. Okay, alright, fair enough. Um, so the metal is peculiar and flawed. That's essentially meaning that for the sort of grand scale manufacturing that most of the galaxy, in more or less universe, takes part in, the metal is not good enough to withstand the pressures uh, and whatnot that are typically found to be a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, requirement to handle, you know, general purpose stuff. So, I guess that means that it's just bad for anywhere else. By galactic standards. Unfortunate, but oh well. Or maybe perhaps they just haven't found the right way to uh, properly utilize it. I guess that's the phrase I'm trying to go for. <laughs> anyway, uh, is there anything known about the history of the planet? Very little. There are hints that it might once have been a lush world. But I can't picture it as anything but a desert. Yeah, because Native you've known it as a desert species for so long. species have no records going back that far. That was hundreds of years ago. Maybe thousands. Of course, the native species are not very willing to tell anyone anything. 
They're barely more than animals. Okay, what species do you mean? The sand people. They're oh. vicious and attack outsiders on sight. More animal than anything, really. Maybe that seems a little mild a bit of racist. Doing. Maybe they don't. Impossible to tell. They won't cooperate. Huh. Have you had trouble with the sand people? Not personally, but they've given Zerka Corporation a rough time. It's hard enough mining this rock without suffering random attacks. I see. I think the company has even put a bounty on them, but I'm sure not going to try for it. Fair enough. Is there any other sentient races? The Jawas are scavengers and a bit primitive. Hard to understand. They have an affinity for droids. Okay. Some of our scientists believe that they may not be native to the planet, but how they got here, they may not even know. As I said, they're hard to understand. Huh. They usually end up slaves to the sand people. They aren't fighters. Good traders, though. Hmm. So, not very strong. Not really good fighters. Uh, good traders, though. And possibly not native to the planet, but no signs as to how they got here. If that was the case. Hmm. Interesting information. Where should a person look for opportunity? I think I've already answered that question, or rather gotten an answer to that question. Uh, let's go I'm back to my other questions. I can. What will you need while on Tatooine? And I think I got all I really want. I need to get going. As you wish. If you need anything else, I'll be here. Sounds good to me. Hey, Bastel, I got another level up. Hells yeah. Alright, so let's get her level up. Um, yeah, let's just go up with injury. Or treat injury, rather, there. Um, because I'm still not sure if maybe now this is necessary or not. Uh, I'm just going to go with toughness for now, and I'll focus the next point onto that. So let's go to powers, and let's see. What else can I go for? I could go for stasis. Or force whirlwind. Force whirlwind might be pretty good. I like that. I like that, actually. Because it might cause some damage in the process. Okay, she has the most force points out of the two of us, but I have the most vitality. And I still do not have enough defense to be on par with fucking missions. God damn it. <laughs> I'm wearing the best armor. Why? Why, damn it? Okay, well. All right. Okay. I guess I have no choice in the matter. I didn't give... Oh, yeah, I didn't give her that yet. That's right. Okay. Um, it's a Jedi robe. Let's give her the Jedi Knight robe. There we go. Perfect. Good. Uh, Joel Ul Kurax. Hello there, Captain. Let's see. Ah, yes. Here it is. It looks like the shipment has been delivered to your ship, as requested. What shipment? What are you talking about? This is Docking Bay 32, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's what I, what I have here on this requisition form. Everything seems to be in order. The Gizka are your problem now. Excuse me, did you just say Gizka? It says right here on the manifest that you ordered a crate of Gizka to be delivered to Docking Bay 32. That's right here. Now, all I need is your thumbprint for the... Wait a second, where did the data pad go? Uh, nothing is ever organized around here. At any rate, the Gizko are yours. One of the loaders said the crate split open when he put it in your hold. Some of the critters might have gotten loose. What? That happens, I'm afraid. We don't accept liability, and we certainly couldn't take the cargo back. Enjoy. Let me just get this straight. You lost the data pad which said that you need me 
to take a crate of creatures named Gizka that I didn't order, but you apparently got an order for at some point. You then put it on my ship, and one of your dumbass workers busted it open, and now they are running around my ship. to see what the damage is. Oh. That doesn't even look like it has eyes. That's creepy. Pick it up. You try to pick up the Gizka, but it wriggles from your grasp and plops back down to the floor. The Gizka looks at you curiously, cooing. Uh... Pet it? You scratch the little critter behind its nubs that pass for ears. <laughs> so I'm assuming those things. And it coos enthusiastically in response. Gizka looks disappointed at the lack of attention and hops away. They're all over my goddamn ship. Okay. Alrighty then. I now have a bunch of alien creatures on my ship that are essentially amphibian cats. And apparently I have the option to kill them, but I'm not going to do that. Because I have a feeling that Jihani also has a level up since Bastila did. I'm just going to head out with Jihani and then I'll replace her with Mission in a second. Yep, I was right. I was right. Whoops. Okay. So let's go to treat injury and level that up. Good. Um. Hmm. Yep, let's go to that. Powers. Hmm. I don't see why I shouldn't give her a force shield. Huh. Fair enough, I guess. Or maybe I should give her force resistance. Huh. Offer some direct, or some protection from direct force power attacks. Huh. That might actually be something good. Huh. Alright, I can go with that. Her vitality is almost close to mine, but her force powers are very lacking. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, party selection. Let's take Jihani off for now. And add on mission. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. And the guy who did the thing is now gone. Great. Great, okay. Pouch. I can just... You just let me take that. They just... Okay. Okay. Can I take these things then? Maybe? Yep, they're just letting me take them. Alrighty. 
Okay. I don't see why not. I don't see why I shouldn't. Just take them if they're going to let me. All right. Well, that's a thing. That's a thing I can do. Check the time. It is okay. Good. Who's that? Turn or turn it, you gunda fassa. I don't even know how to fucking say that. Customers are talking. That's better. Hello, customer. Buy from Mick. I don't fucking know. And don't be shy. Just ask to see what you want. If you can't get a good look, we we don't move the merchandise. Okay. Um. Then you move you, I guess. Uh, I have a few I have a few questions. We are here to serve. What do you need to know? Uh, what are you? What about you? Mick Turanjus is just a humble merchant from the rim. What would you wish to know about we? Are you one creature or two? You are pardoned for asking because you only know one mind, or at least only one at a time. We are one now, but weren't always. What does that mean? We grow together, bonded from the age of choosing when we become whole. Not like you. You are half of what you should be, like Brood Squealer. Or not that we would want to offend you. We don't want to lose any business. That is just our way as Pear Dwag. Pear Dwag? Is that your species name? Just out of curiosity, because I do not recall anything like you like ever your other half doesn't say much just because you can't hear it doesn't mean it isn't there okay so he talks in a tone that is indiscernible to humans fair enough uh, where do you come from? You couldn't say it and don't have the ears for it. Two voices create the name and four ears hear the true name. You suppose the trade lanes have had to call us something. With one mouth the world is Sorgis, just far off the Perlamian trade route. Sorgis far off the Perlamian. It's an unimportant stop, we admit. We left for a life of trade because we are strong and a good talker. We have done well. Okay. Uh... Do you know any off-world rumors? Just what everyone else is talking about. Sit Terrace and the Sith and the stirring of change. Could be good for business, could be bad for business. All we know is that wise people uh, keep low and stay out of the way. Something to always remind your other half. As if you have one. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Wait, let me get this straight. You guys are kind of like a married couple... Is that, is that kind of what I'm getting the gist of here? Can I'm I just I I don't understand. I don't understand. Pear Dwag. I I guess this the the name I just don't understand at all I guess I'm gonna have to google it at some point all right uh do you know anything about Tatooine outside of the spaceport not as much as we should if we knew more we would have better business travelers like us best settlers don't have much to trade we don't travel far on Tatooine itself you see the weather is not like our home too dry way too dry uh, who would I ask to get more info? Always trust the locals, even if they don't trust you. They are the ones that really know what's going on. That's true on any world. Okay, fair enough. Let's see what you've got to sell. Yes, of course, we don't want to keep you from your important business. Please, have a look. I can't talk is what I'm learning today, because I stumbled over two-thirds of that entire conversation. Oh, advanced med packs are infinite now. Well, that's good. I probably should buy some life support packs, especially since they're not even double the price of regular med, uh, rather advanced med packs, like uh, advanced med packs are double the price of regular med packs. But at the same time, Jamo Hogra's Carbine. Okay. Bonus physical damage. And it's upgradable. 
This was once the weapon of mercenary Jemo Hagra, and was supposed to protect him against the many enemies he earned in his lifetime. Hagra's skill didn't match its potential, however. Clearly not, because it's being sold here right now. I have enough credits to buy it, but that does not mean I'm going to. Ah, uh, boy. Usanus's brand, huh? It's upgradable and has ion against droid damage on top of physical damage. Usanus was the most famous of Ichani warriors, fighting against oppression and villainy until encountering Darth Revan. Discovering that Revan had killed an Ichani senator, Usanus attempted to tell authorities but fell to the powers of the Sith Lord despite his own impressive abilities, and the Cortorsus Weave inherited all Ichani vibroblades. Well, that sucks. So he, he ran into Darth Revan and just got bitched. Gotcha. All right. That sucks for him. Huh. Karakin gauntlets. These heavy gauntlets created by the isolationist Karakin are almost a complete medical computer in themselves. They constantly monitor, ugh, monitor and adjust the nervous impulses, blood pressure, and tension throughout the wearer's hands. The resulting increase in stability and overall system integrity have many benefits, including a plus to dexterity and all saves. Wow. Ooh. It's actually pretty good, but it costs a fuck ton. I'm not willing to buy it just for that reason. Even though it is pretty good. Arcanian Shield. That is... That's actually pretty good compared to the normal energy shield. This covers a whole lot more sources and has a higher threshold of damage before it runs out. Hmm. Not sure if I should miss out on it or not, honestly. Not sure. Gizka poison. Huh. Any Gizka ingesting one of these toxic pellets will die within a few seconds. It will also cause the creature to attack all other Gizka in the area, infecting them as well. Yeesh. All right. That's fucked. I guess I can outright kill them if I want to, but I don't think I'm going to. That's fucked up. This is a highly pungent mixture of local plants and fungus. Banthas apparently find it in irresistible, if I can only talk. Though it's doubtful any intelligent species would willingly call it food. Well, from the, from the feeling that my mouth is unable to speak, I might be one of those. Okay. All right. All right, so, um... I don't think I want to buy anything here yet. Not yet, anyway. Um, is there anything here I really need to keep? Not particularly. Um... I guess I don't really need every single concussion grenade I have. Uh, plasma grenades are pretty good. I don't want to keep them just because they're that good. Uh, sonic grenades are kind of meh. Guess I can sell those. Don't need Davix visor. Absolutely do not. Um. Huh. I 
I'm not sure what I want to sell. Not really. And eh, don't really need those. Hmm. Ion grenades probably have some use. Poison, probably not. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I have much use for anything else. Well, much use to sell anything else. Um, and I don't think there's a lot here that I want to buy, to be perfectly honest. Um... Mandalorian Heavy Repeater. I guess that would be a good replacement for, uh... Well, actually, no, not really. Because, uh, at least... The Candorous is, is upgradable. This is not. Alright, well... I, uh, I'll come back to this in a bit. Uh, just... When I find out what I really need to do... Uh, in regards to, uh stocking up and uh yeah i guess we'll just head out here we are in tatooine ronto <laughs> oh man these things are the weirdest looking okay look Half giraffe looking fucking thing. Okay, um. I'm kind of not sure where to go next. So, I think I'm just going to end the episode here for right now. And I will get back to it in a bit. So, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see y'all in the next episode. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat playing games and getting into Tatooine and all of the shenanigans that we will be dealing with therein because there seems to be a whole new planet for us to explore and find new missions of shenanigans to do. Uh, probably going to try and make some money, as much money as we can, for you.